We're just days away from Wisconsin's primary, and candidates are making their final pitches across the state. Our new battleground tracker poll shows Donald Trump closing in on Ted Cruz. He is six points behind him in the state, which will send 42 delegates to the GOP convention in July. But Trump is walking back comments he made about abortion in an interview with John Dickerson for Face the Nation. And this just days after he came under fire for remarks he made to MSNBC, where he said women should be punished for getting abortions if abortions were made illegal. CBS News contributor and Wall Street Journal columnist Peggy Noonan is with me, and she joins me from Washington. Peggy, it's good to see you. Donald Glad. Trump, nice to be here. Good to see you. So Donald Trump says it wasn't actually a bad week for him. Is he right? No. <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think, objectively speaking, it was a pretty bad week, at least from the outside. Perhaps he feels a little bit different about it uh, from the inside looking out. But I, I think he struggled with two things. One is, one is, uh, I think reporters were a little bit, in some cases, a little bit baiting and browbeating towards him. But that has to be expected when you're running for president. The other problem is that he's continued, I think, the past few weeks at least, to say um, and announce unfortunate things. And they've gotten him in trouble. And I feel at the end of the day, he actually, you know, he has a sort of stable 33, 37 uh, percent uh, of support. And I just feel at this point, after I think nine months of being the front runner, it ought to be growing. And I think his support is not really growing in an obvious way or that's that is in a way that is obvious uh, to others looking from the outside in part because he sort of sabotages himself by saying uh, strange things or needlessly controversial things or ill thought through things and to that point Peggy uh, he told Maureen Dowd of the New York Times that he regrets or at least it was a mistake retweeting that unflattering photo of Ted Cruz's wife uh, that's not typical Donald Trump at least that's not what we've come to expect from Donald Trump what yeah. do you make of that and also she seemed to describe a very different Trump than the one we see on TV uh, you know I, I thought it felt fresh you know, he yeah. sort of said, OK, I guess I shouldn't have done that. There, there's a lot of trouble that Donald Trump could get himself out of if he would simply be frank a few hours after he said whatever he said and said, you know what, maybe that wasn't the best way to put it, or maybe I shouldn't have done that, or, geez, I don't know why, why I did that. It's good to second guess yourself, and it's good when it's when you know you've done something wrong to say, I blew it. Everybody forgives you when you say you blew it. And well, Mr. Trump has been pretty merciless in hitting other candidates for flip-flops, and we counted five positions on abortion in three days. So, <laughs> I mean, does this speak to this larger issue, as you're pointing out, with his precision and his war choice, and whether or not, this is what I think a lot of people believe, that he's pandering, and that's why you can't nail him down on any one position. Yeah, I know what you mean. Sometimes he looks like he's desperately trying to remember what he was told the conservative position was, right. and he gets it a little bit wrong. And on some issues, getting it a little bit wrong is getting it a lot wrong. This, to me, is connected to, I, I kind of think Donald Trump doesn't take seriously enough the idea that at a certain point in a presidential campaign, you can't just be pulling it out of your ear. You can't just be making it up every day. Not everything can be sort of irrepressibly blurted. At a certain point, you have to sit down, study, be sober about your views, and put them forward soberly. That speaks of competence in a campaign. And I do think that the American people still, kind of at the end of the day, judge a campaign, but judge whether or not you can become president by whether or not you had a competent campaign. If they see competence here, they'll think, OK, he can bring that competence to the White House. So I, I think what the Trump campaign has to do right now, what Trump has to do is professionalize. That's the word. Get professionals around him who can be tough on him sometimes and say, walk that back. Yeah, that's that's the question. Do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. He really, and also take his iPhone from him. <laughs> he, yes. If it's an iPhone that he has, he loves to tweet. He needs somebody around him who says, boss, give me the iPhone. Yeah, or I'm let not me giving see. it back. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in charge of the tweets. You can tweet it, but I'm the one who sends it out. And if it's crazy, I am not sending it out. Yeah. Um, so he needs to pro professionalize in that way. And he needs to professionalize in terms of his 
delegate getting operation. Uh, let's switch very quickly to the Democrats. We know you got to go. Uh, we spoke earlier about Hillary Clinton's exasperated rope line moment this week, saying she was so sick of accusation from Bernie Sanders' campaign. Are we seeing some genuine frustration here? Yeah, Ruth Marcus on uh, Face the Nation just just made the the point to John Dickerson that it is a very um, unfortunate look for a candidate when they are shaking a finger at a voter. Do you know what I yeah. mean? And going like that with them. Um, uh, yeah, I'm sure she's frustrated, and I suspect she feels she may have some frustrations coming. I keep thinking, you know, I'm a New Yorker. I live in New York. I just got a feeling I, I know that the, the CBS polling has uh, Hillary Clinton 10 points ahead of Bernie Sanders, and I have no reason to doubt it, and yet it is my sense that that thing may be tightening up. Mm. Now, it would be very embarrassing if it got very tight in New York. This is New York's former senator. This is her home state, at least in a, in a political and technical way. So, so I think when they start going like this, they're not only saying, I'm frustrated. They're saying, and I can see more frustration coming. Mm. Peggy Noonan, always great to have you. Thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you very much.